to a high standard production. Back to the Geek Set Podcast, the only podcast that blend hip hop culture and geek culture together. I'm your boy Deuces, and this is One on One with Deuces. And right now, man, I am speaking with a legend, man, somebody that I truly, truly, truly respect. Legend. And listen here, comedian, actor, director, content creator, boss, um, <laughs> bro. Like, you know what? Like, let me. I'm just gonna run off some of the shows that I watch that I enjoy. Okay. You know? <laughs> and I wanted to let you know, like, this is a, this is crazy to me because I'm like, I don't. Like, do like it's, it seems like you're just doing content 24 <laughs> 7. It seems like that to me, too. Sometimes I'll be like, bro, you realize you don't have to do it every day. Man, because, man, every day, because you got all dev digital. Well, all dev digital is where it came from. That's where I got introduced to you, all dev digital. But Kev on stage to studio. Here's the thing Righteous mm-hmm. and Ratchet, mm-hmm. the Love Hour, Axka, Masterclass, the, the Creators yeah. Conference, Game yeah. Night, Zooming with the Homies. All right, catch my breath. Unpopular opinion, great taste. Uh, <laughs> squad cast, quarantine games, like just, just so much, so much more. What gave you this work ethic? Like, why do you go so hard in, the, in this game? I'm gonna tell you. Well, all those shows I, I appear on, they're not all mine. So some are easier than the others because I just have to like, be you it. know, go and be funny. You know okay. what I'm saying? So that's a little bit easier. But the reason I can do this is because I was poor (laughs) and I don't want to go back. Like, (laughs) really, bro, when I think about, and I wasn't like poor and unhappy, I just was poor. Like, you know, in this business, you got to work, man. You got to, you got to be willing to work and work and work some more. And that's, that's, I've always been a hard worker, even outside of this business. Even as a kid, I had a lawn care business. Like I'm no stranger to hard work. Right. Uh, but you know, they say like getting there is half the battle, but working to stay there is, is another part of it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's, that's part of why I do it. Well, you know, I, I, when I was like, just going back and looking into research on everything about it, I was like, you know what? I wonder because if it's the upbringing, because I had that same upbringing of a military yeah. kid. My dad was in the Air Force and the Army. You know, saying you were you come from a military family. And my dad always had this saying: it's "Like you get what you need, not what you want." And so, like, yeah. <laughs> so that forced me to get. I got. I my first job I had was I was thirteen because I wanted to buy like jerseys and and shoes and hats. And my dad was like, "Nah, you don't need that. Just get you a regular Hanes shirt from Kmart." Hey, <laughs> no lie, my parents, I wanted Jordans. And my dad was like, listen, I, I got to get your shoes. I don't have to get you Jordans. So if you want Jordans, you're going to have to work. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's 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 where my work ethic came. Because I was like, man, yeah. I, you know, I remember when like, I got my check and then I was like, all right, so I'm going to just go to the mall and everything. Because, you know, moms would always, you know, try to help yep. me out. So like when it came down to school, I'm like, I want to get some shoes. My dad like, you need just one pair of shoes. You only got two feet. And- yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, but I'm like, oh, I gotta have, I gotta have some white, I gotta have a white pair, gotta have the black pair, like I gotta have multiple different um, shoes. So I was like, that's where I had to bring in my own money because then it's like, okay, my dad's gonna buy me the one shoe, I can buy my second pair of shoe, and then you know I can continue to be as fresh as I wanted to be, I guess, right. in, in school. <laughs> fresh as I'm is. Fresh as I'm is. <laughs> um, I want to let you know, I'm kind of disappointed, man. I'm kind of disappointed. There's a lot of reasons you can be disappointed in me. I'm pretty sure I know why, but I want to hear it. Yep, you know why. I I was expecting the unit. (laughs) I knew it! I I knew it! I was expecting the unit, man. (laughs) But It's too hot, bro. I know. On your your most recent episode, that's what you were talking about it. You were talking about, like, you got more more respect for the women. Listen, bro, (laughs) I, my wife was like, nah, keep on, keep wearing it, keep wearing it. (laughs) I'm like, bro, I'm already hot. It's just a hot day. I, you know, I was doing it for the joke and then people start sending me links. Here's how you keep it in. Here's how you take care of it. I'm like, bro, listen, you know what? Being bald ain't so bad. <laughs> you were so geeked up when you first got it though, too. That's what I'm it still is. geeked up. I'm just only geeked up in spurts. Like I want to wear it for five minutes on a video. <laughs> After 20 minutes, it'd be like, okay, bro, I'm done with this. I'm done. So. <laughs> 
I got it in my backpack, but that, listen, man, that thing is hot, bro. And I hate being hot. So are you, are you gonna switch it up? Are you gonna get another one? Because you know they got there's multiple. Oh, ones. we are just getting started. <laughs> I'm got I got I got some uh longer locks on the way, so I okay. can put up in the bun. <laughs> I got some tray songs, braids coming. I got some plaits. Uh, listen, no <laughs> hairstyle. I might have what you got going too. I'm working on that. Oh uh, man, <laughs> I can. It, it's funny because um, like your fans and just even like you know what I'm saying your peers. Like I, when you're posting, like when you're doing the videos and you're posting the Photoshop for versions of you with the uh with different hairstyles. Mm. That is by far some of the funniest things that I'm seeing because some of them look like legit. <laughs> Bro, I used to be sitting in the airport just, you know, waiting for a flight. And I would take my time to make sure it looked legit. So, yes. Oh, that's I, you doing it? Yes, bro. Oh, I, I thought those was fan made. <laughs> oh, the, no, the, the, the weight loss stuff, when people were making fun of my body, that was fans. But all the hair, that was me dreaming of what I could be. <laughs> Live strong, Photoshop, let, let, make you be whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But so, all right. So with that being said, I know one of the big things that like fuels a lot of the stuff that you do is um, your family. Like your family, you got a really close knit family, but you and your wife, you're kind of like the dynamic duel together that are um, like running Kev on stage studios. And I know that she pushes you a lot. I know you, you, you sing her praises a lot. Mm hmm what's how is like i guess how important is that to have that bond with somebody who can understand the industry that you're in and also give you that same type of like worth ethic man it is it is the most valuable thing right like this industry is hard man i i, I, I give me your name it's deuces right yeah deuces yep yeah what i'm learning this season deuces is like there's more to it than this like this part is the easy part you yep. know Making a podcast with, you know, we just met, but you're my boy. You're my boy. You know, chopping right. it up with you for 45 minutes and out. That's that's the easy part, right? Yeah. The legal part, the 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 negotiations, the the friendships change, the way people perceive you, like that stuff is the hard stuff. And the the further you go career-wise, there's less people you can talk to about that. Yeah. Who who really care about you, the person, right? Kevin on stage is my my stage personality, right? Now it's very close to who I am for real, but it's still a performance personality. But Kevin Fredericks, bro, the, the business is tough, man. It's the there's bro, there's it's it's Hollywood, bro. Like <laughs> it, it it's Hollywood, bro. Everybody's scratching and clawing to get to the top. And people will do whatever they gotta do to yeah. do that, right? So to have someone to come home to that understands that where you don't have to be the persona you could just be the person maybe the person ain't strong that day right the persona is always going to be strong right but the person might be like bro this sucks today man this sucks right like so that's an invaluable blessing man to, to have somebody there with me to have my back right there's no price on that that's why you know People get big and leave their wives and stuff or one with a big butt. I, can, I don't need no big butt right now. I need a friend. Right. I need yeah. someone who ain't going to judge me for crying. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's more valuable than a big butt. Right. And what, you know what? What's where what, what you touched on, like how people change and how important it is to have the people around you, right? One of the things that I highly, highly respect about you, and I don't know if it was intentional or not that you that you took this way, but I got introduced to you via All Dev Digital, right? And you know, when everything mm -hmm. happened, went down with All Dev Digital, to see you still keep a lot of that core cast around you and then even put them in some better situations. So I'm a true fan. So like, I, right. I, so I'm talking about, I've seen like the videos where, you know, you and Doughboy have y'all moment and you know what I'm saying? And like, he's singing your praises and you know, with everything that Doughboy is going through and then to hear and like, just like the way y'all talk about each other, like that last uh, great taste, where it was like the- Oh my God. Man, listen, it was I, like the end of the Fresh Prince, man. I was there with y'all sitting there like, man, who's cutting onions? Like what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and you know but it was like it's one of those things like i'm like fam i feel like i'm part of the family because i seen you guys from all deaf to 
Kev on stage studio to everything that you guys are doing outside of just everything. But it's still, when y'all come together, like the Avengers is still like, I love it. Like I'm just on Yeah, board. and that's the thing about it. Like for, for us, that's different than say like Denzel, right? Mm -hmm. We love Denzel as an actor. I'm sure you're a fan of it. I, we just met, I know you like Denzel, yes, right? But you don't feel like you know Denzel. Nah. Right? Because we only are privy to, you know, Denzel, the actor, and the person promoting the movie he just acted in that he wants you to see. Right. You don't, you don't, Denzel don't have a podcast. He ain't on Instagram stories like, we out here, Santa. He don't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? So for us, that, that, that connection, I feel like it's a, a closer bond with our, with our fans and supporters because that's not common. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's not the norm. Like, Will Smith kind of, like, he, he came, he's like Blade almost. He was like Denzel, mysterious celebrity. And then he realized like to continue to work and, and, and be at the top of your game yeah. right now, you're going to have to be more like Kevin Hart and The Rock yeah. who, who are social media dynamos. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's partly by design and it's partly because that's who we are. Like if you follow, you know, if you love Denzel, you might get one movie a year, two hours of content, you know, maybe two in a year. And, and that's rare, four hours of content. And maybe all the interviews he does promoting both of those movies, that's maybe six hours total. Because, you know, the late, late night show is three minutes. Yeah. This YouTube video is 10 minutes, right? You can watch six hours of me a week, every week. Yeah. <laughs> every week. New. Yeah. Righteous and Ratchet. Uh, you know, here's the thing. It was an hour and a half bonus episode, another hour and a half love hour, another hour and a half. Dear Kev, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, zooming with the homies, another two hours. Squad cast, another two hours. That's 10 hours. And we do that every week. Yeah. So you feel like you know more because you do know more. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because there's when, when you feel like you're in on the the little like um like the, the inside jokes and everything that's how it, you know that's how you feel like you're a part of it because you know for before COVID and the quarantine hit one of the things that we were trying to do with our podcast was figure out how to start generating income like we've been mm -hmm. doing this for three years and for the most part it's just been us building our name building our name but not generating any, any income and I was like man right. I want to do the Patreon but I'm like I don't know how to do it like I was it was just like it, I'm like how am I going to be going from giving everything for free to saying, okay, we'll sign up to this. Right. And so when I, when you guys started doing the Patreon more and just seeing how you guys operate. And then I think the turning point for me was when you guys got, when you guys left racist studio and went to new studio. <laughs> and, <laughs> and when you guys, um, when your when the, when the stage crew got together and gave you, get the, did the gift cards for you guys without you guys even knowing, and I was like, bro, like I showed my whole team this video and I was like, fam, if you connect with, if you connect with your, your core fan base like that, like this is stuff that is possible. And you know, that's kind of like the, the route that we are trying to attempt to bring with this whole geek, black geek thing, because we were like, you know what, we have all this content that we want to do and we want to centralize it and have different shows and different things that we do on our channel. Um, and I was like, Let's just jump. I was like, now is the time. Like, I started these one on ones during COVID. I started really, yeah. I started so you know, so the first few, like, I did, I have six under my belt, and I was able to get you know, some really dope people involved. You know, Timothy De La Ghetto was good. Um, you Jim, got Tim? yeah, Tim was my third guest. How'd uh, you get Tim reaching out the same way? You know, I just reach out to people because my, my thing is, I've always, I've always had the mindset the worst that something can happen is they're going to say no. You, you know, know what? Because I should be like you. Listen, I be saying stuff, and then I don't even be listening to my own words sometimes. Yeah. And so, listen, if somebody says no, nothing changed. It was already no before you asked. Right. So if they say no, it's just still back to status quo. The worst that can happen is they say yes. Right. And so, you know, and so, and that's what it is. And I think once I started getting some certain names, and I was like, all right, now I got an actual playlist of it I can send to people. Like, I was... So behind the scenes, like I was legit trying so hard to get to you for the past few months that I was like, ah. and I, I try to get everything myself. And I was like, that's something I got to get out of is the habit of thinking that I can only do it. So like, Listen, it, you are, you are me. I am the same <laughs> way. So you don't want to ask for no favors. Right. And I was like, I was like, you know, Crystal, that's my homie, homie from a while. And I'm like, 
I know it and I know that she'll do it for me, but I didn't want to. And even when I was typing it, I was like, ah, oh, man, I feel like I'm begging or taking advantage of. And she was like, <laughs> He was like, no, I'll do it for you. And I was like, all right, man. I, I didn't expect anything too much of it. Cause I like, even the way I positioned her, I was like, just, just let them know that there's an email probably in this email and I'll just take it from there. Like I was trying to like- You, you know, it's funny. I don't, I purposely don't have access to those emails. Yeah, I, I figure so. And Yeah, I, it's just, it's a lot, deuces. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot to manage. So I have people, you know, and it's, so here's what happens, right? you know, my wife, my manager, my team, mm -hmm. they're trying to make sure that every opportunity is like yeah, it's event. worth it yeah. for me, right? 100%. But what's also worth it for me is for people who may not have a big platform yet, right? Mm -hmm. But who are valuable, right? Like there's no way, it's going, hopefully, it's easier for you to get the next person you want because you like, oh, Kev did it, right? Yeah. And I want to do that for creators because I was you before and I wish somebody would have, you know what I'm saying? Like when I reached out to Tim, when I was just a fan and he agreed to do it, this is for all deaf because all deaf was my crystal for you. Okay. Right? I, I couldn't get him to come to Kevin on stage straight because I was a no one. Right. But if all deaf could work with him, then I could get a relationship and you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Do a thing, do it right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, but I want us to do that. I want to always be able to do that for, for people to make it easier for us to, you know, continue mm -hmm. to grow because I was there before bro and I knew that and that's why I was like that's why I told her I was like I know that if I tell if I if I pitch to him this idea of it he'll be like oh that's pretty dope you know you know what I'm saying so I was like I, yeah. had, I had faith in what we were doing I just needed to get in front of you somehow and so that's and you got it yeah and so Hold you know second deuces my son is asking what boy what <laughs> yes I'm filming obviously I'm filming <laughs> I mean you come on you it's obvious deuces you see the lights you hear someone else's voice <laughs> Bring my credit card back. <laughs> you want to know what's funny? So speaking of kids, oh uh, man. So I, like I said, I go into these spurts where I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch all of it, right? So like, I just recently was like, I'm going to watch all the quarantine games. Uh -huh. Dude, the, what's it, Random Nonsense? What, no, what, is it called Random Nonsense? Oh, uh, it, nonsense. It's incoherent. No, the Utter Nonsense one. The one where you guys had to say- Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. talking about crime. So you have- you have kids, so when your kid, remember when your kids was young and they would stay up super late with you, and you're like, oh, I gotta give them to sleep. And then once they got like that that nod, you're like, all right, don't nobody say anything. I was at that step, right? right. With my daughter, I don't know why I chose to watch that video. I'm talking about belly laughing, crying, because like y'all accents were horrible, <laughs> terrible, bro. Terrible. But it was it was so entertaining. And the the part that took me out when y'all had to do Chewbacca. And <laughs> oh my god, so hard and woke my daughter up, and I'm like, oh, all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, the thing about Chewbacca is like, you when you're watching Star Wars, you think you could do it, then when you have to, you're like, okay, how, how do you like, how do you get that going? Well, this is when this, while you guys were doing when you would say like the topic, like the sentence, and the accent, I would try it myself. And I'm like, man, I'm trash too. Like, <laughs> like, I, like I, I legit thought I had a good Denzel. And I'm like, Ugh, I, don't, I don't have a good Denzel. <laughs> oh, that Denzel. We're all trash, bro. <laughs> but you know what? That's one thing that you guys do as well too, is you bring everybody, like your fans, to feel like they're a part of it. This is when I knew that I was all on the Kev on stage, like whole, um, the whole wave. When I started noticing that in my, Regular day life, I would go, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, dang. <laughs> I was like, I know it's going to be one person that's going to, like, from afar, he's going to hear me. He's going to be like, I know you got that from. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know, I know exactly where you got that from. Um, so back on, back on work ethic, because I know that you've been, recently you've been putting out, well, not recently, I think it's been your, your main theme for a while, but you've been saying how like your worth ethic is what gets you to where you are at. Like you may yeah. not be the funniest comedian, but your worth ethic, ethic and- I'm not the funniest comedian. And your business mind, right, is what yeah. push you there. Now, is where did that come from as far as like that business mindset? Was that something that you went to school for or is it something that you just learned on the way? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. So I, I want to apologize. I am destroying this Thai tea. It's all right, man. I'm trying so hard not to drink this amp. <laughs> <laughs> Just drink. I'm chewing boba. Uh, 
<laughs> oh. oh man. Um, but it's uh how do I say this? You gotta know what you're what you're good at, right? What you bring to the table, right? Kevin Hart, you know, I admire Kevin Hart and The Rock a lot because they just are like relentless with yeah. their work stuff, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember Kevin Hart one time, I my wife and I saw him. This this is in LA, saw him at the Stable Center on a Friday night, right? We leave, get home eleven o'clock. I wake up in the morning at six o'clock, and on Kevin Hart's Instagram story, he's on set in Boston. <laughs> what? <laughs> are you doing right yeah. so i was telling my boy back when i worked at all Def, I'm like bro i gotta work as hard as i can but i'm like i can't catch up to kevin hart and they're like yeah because you don't have what he has he's got a chef a team private jet like you know in la the last flight out is at 10. he left at midnight but he has a private jet so all i'm saying to myself is let me work as hard as he does with what i can do right obviously i don't have a private jet so my work hard is that you know what i'm saying i gotta i gotta transfer in nashville to get to to huntsville he, he can go straight there you know what i'm saying so DJ. i was never gonna let my work ethic be the reason i don't get it you know what i'm saying like and here's the thing bro like in every facet of life the best person at something isn't always the best right when we were coming up, there, I'm sure in your high school, there was kids who were better at basketball than people who were on the basketball team. Yep. In order to be on the basketball team, you got to, you know, try out. You got to come to practice. You got to have good grades, right? So a lot of people can't do that, right? Deion Sanders said this, and this kind of always stuck with me. He said, man, I wasn't even the best person in my neighborhood. Yeah. Much less my high school. But there's a lot more to it than, than being funny or, or being good when he said, but for me, it's been being funny, right? Even being on time, like, you know, I was 15 minutes late for your thing and I'm, I'm losing my mind because I want to be on time for everything. I'm dealing with a legit issue. I'm never late. Like I knew this was at three o'clock from this morning, but I had something, you know, undone and I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want even you who are just meaning to be like, wow, oh, man, I had Kevin, he flaked, he, he flaked, you know what I'm saying? So um, I always want to let my my work ethic be something that I can count on right. and then my talent be something else. Like, I don't know if you're into sports, but I'm assuming you know yeah. who LeBron is. Yeah, yeah. Bro, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, these people were at the best. Yeah. Dirt. I mean, top of their game, MVP, and they're still working harder than everybody in the league. Man, listen here. Brian puts what he said. Oh, put up. They put him. He put a million into his body. A million in his body. That is crazy. But it, it, it shows. You know, like I said, I so I'm a Kobe fan. So I'm a big Brian hater on the court. I'll fair. Off, off fair. The court, I love everything he does. But it was hard to you. You had to choose sides. Yeah, yeah. But I respect. I'm like. The one thing that I can't take from him, no matter what, even if I don't like him on the court, is he is in peak form at his age because of the dedication that he puts into his body. Year 17. Man. We grew up on Jordan, right? Yeah. Jordan wasn't like that in year 17, no. right? <laughs> no. And, I don't, and I'm not even blaming Jordan. We didn't have yeah. technology the way we did then, right. right? But no one is that good in year 17. Man. People get hurt. They get old. So he's a phenom in that way. But like, even Kobe, I remember Kobe was saying that his work ethic started because he couldn't go to the club when he was in the league. He was right. 18. Yeah. So they went out and he went to work. And then when he was still at the top of his game, he was still working like that. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I can at least do that. Yeah. Because this is nothing compared to the jobs I've had. I'm talking about, I worked for the city of Tacoma landscaping yeah being up at five o'clock in the morning picking up cigarette butts out of the courthouse this that hard work this is how i knew that like where i was like i'm like all right i'm gonna change profession so one of my very very first job was i was a caddy and caddy was cool it was all right you know but here's where caddy sucks when you have to go to that first early tea time and the grass is a little bit wet and oh, you, get that one, you get that one golfer who's like no we're gonna walk all the holes and i'm just like all right, this is not for me. And so then I went to Best Buy. I was like, all right, I'm gonna work in Best Buy. This, this is where I was like, all right, I'm gonna change. So they put me in the warehouse. I'm like, all right, it's cool. That first day, 
you know, the, if you ever worked in a the warehouse, there's no, there's, you, the only air you get is if they open up the back. But if they don't, it's hot. And I'm just like, man, this is crazy. So I went to the boss and I said, hey, you got anything on the floor for me? I could be a salesman. And then ever since then, I've been either in sales or I've been in a call center. I have not went back to physical labor <laughs> since then. Do you work at Best Buy still? No, 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 no. I work. Oh, at you mean just in general, you ain't been in the back? I work at a call center right now. And I don't, like I said, my this is probably where I'm going to end unless things take off for me with my podcast and everything like that. Because I, it's, it's, I'm at a comfort stage, but it's, it's weird at the level that I'm at. Because I'm at that level where it's like, it looks like you're doing something where even my boss is like, what, what are you doing here? Like, I, I saw your podcast on this or I saw yeah. you on this. And so I'm like, it's it just, it's not, it's not feasible for me to take care of my family with this yet. And listen, bro, a lot of times online, people are like, man, if you don't quit your job, you don't love it. That's terrible advice. Yeah. It is the word, and it, 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 it burns my soul. My first whole year on tour, 50 City Tour, I worked a regular job. I flew yeah. out on Thursday night or Friday morning, and I flew back to LA on Monday, and I went right back to work proudly because touring has no health care. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if I didn't make the ticket sales, I'm going to have to pay these comedians somehow. Yeah. So my regular job is your, my, my first investment. And honestly, man, I was willing to do this on the side for as long as I had to. And even some people, you may not, not, not you, because I'm sure you're going to make it. Okay. But some people do it and it might just be a side hustle. They might like my sister, for example, this, I'm not even, I wasn't trying to shade you. I hope it didn't come across like, no, that. no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Okay. My sister-in-law works at Netflix, right? And in her spare time, she wrote a book and she sold it and sold merch. And it's not her desire to, to do that full time. Like right. she likes her job. So that's what I mean. Like it's okay to, to do this in your spare time. It's okay to do this while this builds up. Bro, I did a regular job for 10 years. Like right. all deaf was just one job that I did where I loved this. I did, I did Boeing. I did Key Bank. I did Bank of America. I worked at a daycare. Like, I was always working a regular job and doing this. You know what I'm saying? It was my thing to look forward to. So listen, just do that. You got yeah. a family. You got, even if you don't have a family, you got a cell phone bill. Listen, right, because exactly. another part of it is it's easier to invest in your business when you don't have to use all the money from the business to take care of your life. If your life bills are taken care of from your job, then it's easier to let your business money go back so you can update your mics or your camera equipment or pay for you know, more storage or whatever the case is, that's kind of, that stuff's kind of hard to do when you need it for your job. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's one of the things that I, like I, when I was talking to um, like Timothy De La Ghetto, he was telling me like how like in LA, because there's so many people around, it makes it like easier for him to get guests. And I was like, man, I was like, I'm doing it via zoom. But I was like, if I was in LA, I feel like I'll be, I, I would probably have a really good face to face because I'm like, I'm good at networking and getting people there. Yeah. So one of those things that I'm like, man, that a, that would be a dope. Like, where do you live? I'm out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, man. Oh, I like Milwaukee. A lot of people do. It's funny people when you tell. I've people, had good shows in Milwaukee. Yeah, you know, and so but see, look at Zoom. Like Zoom evens the playing field for you. Like, there's no yeah. way outside of this pandemic I would have flown to Milwaukee to do this. Of course, right? No way. I mean, maybe you would have flown to LA, but like. Oh, Zoom definitely. is like, hey, you got internet, I got internet. Now it's just a time thing. So that, that you know, the internet has been a great field leveler because now you don't have to be in LA to do LA things. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then I put, I put the time into the look of it, right? So, you know, like I know some people when they do the Zoom, they just upload the Zoom video, but I edit it where it looks like. So because it's like geek set and it's a thing, the way I do it is, um, you know, like when you play like the old video games, the versus screen where it shows one yep. That's how I have it set up. I saw that because listen, I ain't gonna hold you, deuces. When I when Crystal sent me, I like let me check it out first. Let yeah. me see, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, this man cares about his stuff. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I'm looking at your YouTube right now. You got a premiere coming up. Yeah. 25th, 10 a.m. with with um uh, Carl Jones. Yeah, from the you know, Tim Delegato. You know, Tim got his headphones on. I, I see <laughs> it. Oh yeah. You you done some work. Man, you know, and oh, look at the look at the graphics when you open it up. Look at the look at the motion graphics. Look at the logo. Geek Set presents. Well, look at that. This man ain't throwing this together. Nah, man. I want. I, I, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure it stand out. So, because I was like, I want something that's going to draw people. I was like, it's going to be. I know the conversation will get there, but 
Like I, yeah. my, my, my thought process has always been like um, an upcoming rapper, right? So when you are an upcoming rapper, you always, people that you tell somebody, oh, I do music, people already doubt you a little bit, right? Yep, yep. Your CD or your cover or whatever they see is the representation of you, right? So I always used to say, you know, invest in that CD cover art because if I tell you I'm a rapper and I hand you a CD with marker on it, you're like, ah, you know. You're done. Right, but if, if you look at the cover, you're like, oh, okay, this looks pretty dope. Yeah. You know? So like, yeah. that's how I'm like when you see Geek Set, I want people to, when they see it, they're like, oh, okay, yo, this is actually, this is not just like uh, some random dude talking on the mic. Now, yeah. they see what now I got past that. So now it's up to the content to keep you and keep you in, uh, in, in game. And you can tell even without the views, right? Like I can tell the production is there and the care is there. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody starts off with zero subscribers and zero views. We all do. Yeah. So I'm not going to be like, he ain't got no nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it helped that Crystal Bubbling is the homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but listen, man, I, 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 I admire the work ethic. And I, listen, I can see where your heart and your ambitions are, are going. You know what I'm saying? So it won't be, I just subscribed to your YouTube page, by the way. Oh, man, thanks. Um, I appreciate that. It won't, uh, it won't be surprising when you get where you're, where you're going. I'm actually learning from you. I'm like, bro, look at Deuces, bro. He getting what he want. Why can't I get? Why <laughs> I don't get what I want? Uh, like, well, I, pop, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, because I think you, if I'm not mistaken, there was a podcast where you was talking about that, where you were saying, like, you're looking at other people. And you're like, man, I want to get there. But then you're thinking that you need to work harder, but then there's somebody that's looking at you. Like I need to get, I need to be where Kev is at. Listen, bro, we all should be doing that. Yeah. Right. I have right now, the person who's destroying my soul with success is Issa Rae. She literally is every, she's always been ahead of me. Right. And I'm not tripping because at the same time she's blowing up, She's opening the door, right? Because her web series became a show on uh, HBO, it's now easier, right? We didn't have many black shows that did that. Work, working is hard, or well, not working is hard. Um, what's it called? Workaholics. Well, yeah. Right. That, the, you you know what happens for white people don't always happen for us. Yeah. Right. So it ain't like I walked in like Lena Dunham. I walked in with nothing, and I that's not happening for us. We gotta have our whole thing together. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, but she's killing on her own show. She's doing movies. She's still doing digital content. Yeah. And then I just saw her in NBA commercial. I'm like, girl, <laughs> you can't stop. You know what I'm saying? But I love to be that. And so I'm striving for that. And some comedians behind me is like, yo, Kev put on his own tour. Yeah. He's got a podcast, whatever that is. And then somebody's behind him, like, man, Deuces got Kev. He got Jim. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. everybody should be striving yeah. for what they, for what they want to get. All right, well, so to, to respect your time, because we do something on every episode, so we do what I call top fives, and I want to do some top fives with you. Um, well, I always do two top fives, and then we're going to do a recommendation, because the two top fives, I always do like a regular one within your realm, but then I do one that may get you in a little, it may get you in a little, uh, little um, trouble. Not, not, not bad, bad trouble, but a little bit of trouble here. But first things first, because I do, because I know you are a traveling, touring comedian, top five cities that you performed in. Mmm, that was a great question. Sorry, my son's bringing my credit card back. <laughs> after a after thousand dollars later. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, this is not a true top five because there's actually a lot of cities, but these okay. are the cities that I have never had a bad show in set-wise and the audience has never let me down audience-wise. Okay. Top one, London, right? Okay. I just... For me, it was, it was always my dream to go, you know, out of the United States and do stand-up comedy. Yep. And the people in London came and had a blast, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the saddest things about COVID. Actually, does, I'm not about to go nowhere this year yeah. like I thought I was. But I had been to London two years in a row, and I was really excited to go again. So London is number one because it's international. The rest are in no particular order. Okay. Always great. Philly, always great. Baltimore and DC, always great. And Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky, okay. Both years that we did this Real Community Social Media Tour, Louisville had the best energy. It was a 200, maybe 250 seat church. 
And when I tell you, we all had monster sets. The energy was amazing. So those are my top five. And the other ones that I just love, going back home to Seattle, Tacoma, there's, that's great. Toronto always has good energy. Huntsville, Alabama, crazy. Houston and Dallas always show love, always buy um, a lot of tickets and stuff. So those are the ones that I love. All right, so this one is going to be the one that gets you maybe in a little trouble with your peeps. So you okay. have a lot of associate associated acts that you rock with. Yeah, top five associated people that you work with. Comedy? No, yeah, I'm talking about like Doughboy, Patrick, to hear like oh, oh, top five. This can go so many different ways. Number one is Tony Baker. Yeah, monster. He is, he's my son's favorite comedian. Yeah. <laughs> he is hard to follow, nearly yeah. impossible to follow. The rest in no particular order. Uh, Patrick Cloud is my son's favorite uh, creator from All Deaf. He just loves him. Uh, Teddy Ray might be the funniest person I know on stage and in real life. Like, he's just super yeah. naturally funny. That chick, Angel, who I do a podcast with, She's amazing and very funny. And how many was that? That's four. Four? I'm trying to think of who just makes me feel like I shouldn't be doing this. Actually, Curveball, Trevor Wallace. Oh, yeah. Trevor, Trevor was my intern, and he has far surpassed me. So out of sheer, he knows what he is doing and business acumen. He's amazing. Yeah, no, I respect that list. Uh, all right, so recommendation. So I always get, try to get the creators to give a recommendation to our listeners. It can be something you're watching, something you're reading, just anything. It doesn't, whatever. Get, what is something that you would like to recommend our listeners to check out or get into? Hmm. Man, you are good at this. <laughs> Those are good questions. What do I recommend? Man, I'm really trying to give you a real answer, not something canned. I appreciate that. That's that's good content right there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. How I built this was really inspiring for me to see how these people built these companies. But it was also very frustrating because most of those were my family gave me $200,000. Mm -hmm. But as far as entertainment and sheer inspiration, I'll say how I built this is a great thing to make you inspired to want to do something great okay and that's the that's a book right just want to make sure i'm clear with that oh it's a podcast oh it's a podcast okay yeah, yeah. so because the, the only reason i ask is funny because like all the black people that i've interviewed they always either put some type of book or podcast or just but it's not like like it's not like oh i recommend new jack city like it's always something right. very very informational on how to yeah, something that you can continue on. Like, I think, I a lot of business acumen you can get for free watching that. Yeah, and I think that's dope because I'm like, yeah, it shows, like, you know, a lot of people are serious about what they're doing. And, yeah, we are reading up on things. and we are Absolutely. Knowledge and we are listening to stuff that's going to actually stick that help us get to a better place. So, Absolutely. So, yeah. All right, so last thing. I mean, obviously, everybody knows where to find you, but where can, I, where can my people find you? Uh, Kev on stage everywhere. Um, my YouTube page, Kev on stage and Kev on stage studios, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Kev on stage, TikTok is Kev on stage, TikTok. Somebody took my name, which is like, I don't, you're not Kev on, I don't know. There's no value for you to have my name on TikTok, but whatever. Um, but Kev on stage everywhere. All right. Man, I, again, truly, truly appreciate your time, man. I do appreciate it. Or thank you so much, Deuces. I owe you 15 minutes another day. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll definitely cash that in at some point when it's like, <laughs> like the way the way you talk about that that one time you talk, you uh, met Will Smith, that's gonna be the same thing. I'm ah, like, thank you so much, bro. I, I met him one time. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, man. I'll let, I'm gonna get out of here, get this, uh, get the edit of this, man, and I appreciate you, man. All right, my man. Take it easy. You, you like that video? Man, thank you for watching. We truly appreciate it. We got so many more videos on our page, so make sure you check them out over here. Hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell so that way you can always be notified anytime we release a new video. You already know how geeks that get down. We got so much coming for y'all, man. Check it out. Stay in tune. There was a time where hip-hop culture and geek culture were at odds.